In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply checkered decals onto our regularly shaped pieces of armor to get a nice painted on look with a whole lot less work than manually painting these all on yourself. For this, you're going to need a couple of tools, but mainly just an X-Acto knife, the decals of choice, in this case I'm using the checkered decals from Fallout Hobbies, as well as some microsol, and matte and gloss varnish. And uh, that's really it. So let's get started. Like all decals, the first step is to ensure that you have a gloss varnish layer down on the area of the model you want to decal over. This gloss varnish layer ensures you have a smooth surface to apply the decal over and helps to prevent the silvering that you sometimes get when you apply decals over a rougher or more matte finish. While the gloss varnish is drying, you can go ahead and cut the decal up to the size that you want it to. This first cut is pretty rough. You just want to make sure that you get the length of the decal long enough to apply over the entire area you're trying to cover up. One important thing to note here though, is a lot of these decals have extra film over the sides of the decal due to the printing process. And you want to try to be as careful as possible to cut these off as they'll interfere with layering this decal on over the tight spaces we're trying to put it onto, as well as making it much harder to line up more rows of these decals next to each other. At this point, you also want to cut the decal down to be more of the shape of the area you're trying to fit it into. In this case, I take the decal and put it up against the van brace while it's still in the backing paper and kind of cut off the area below where the van brace ends. It's okay if it's not perfect as you'll be able to wrap the decal around the painted model later on and repaint over it, but the closer you are to the exact right dimensions, the easier it is. It's also better here to go a little bit longer than you think you need than go shorter as it will look better if you kind of again wrap the decal around the model and have it go over the edge as opposed to it falling short. For this model, I decided to apply the decals in a vertical manner as this provides for less cuts and I can get more of the model filled in with a single decal. This is purely a preference though, it just makes it easier as obviously the less cuts you have to do, the easier this process will be. The other thing I wanted to note here is that sometimes due to the curved nature of the areas that we're applying these decals onto, it's possible that your decal doesn't have a complete straight line against the edge you're trying to go up against. So in this case, the little filigree on the edge of the van brace is actually in the way of the top and the bottom of the decal. But this is okay though, as the microsol we're gonna put on next will actually settle the decal down and conform to these lines. And you can always paint over the silver part again to blend the decal into the rest of the model. So don't really worry about it. While this first row of decals is drying, I take my second row and start to cut out the shape to make sure it fits into the remaining area on the van brace. This is a bit of an iterative process that I'll cut away a small piece of the decal and hold it up to the area that I want to put it on and go back and forth until I have a very snug fit. Much like before, it's okay if there's a little bit of overspill where the decal goes over the edge of the armor plate we're trying to put it on, but it is better to have it as close as possible to here. If you do mess up and cut a little bit too far back though, you can always solve this later on with a little bit of weathering or by painting over this small offending spot. I also should have mentioned this before, but you definitely want to be careful here to ensure that the areas that you're cutting on this second row of decals line up with the checkered pattern that you've already put down. That is, you want to ensure that your white squares match up against the black squares on the previously applied layer to make it look like a seamless checkered pattern instead of two discrete rows of checkers. Once I'm happy with trimming the decal down, I then apply it like normal against the previously existing row. This is also here though why we cut back the film originally as if there was a thin layer of film here, it would cause some problems in aligning the two rows neatly together. And you might actually have your decal snag on that film layer, which again is why it's worth taking the time to cut it out originally. Once the second row is on, I apply Microsol over the entire decal area and wait to let it dry. If you haven't used Microsol before, it's really just a very weak acid that thins out the decal and lets it conform more tightly and closely to the underlying model. This is a great tool to ensure that your decals look like they're painted on and not just floating above certain details on the model. I then give this microsol about five minutes to dry and then apply a layer of matte varnish over the entire piece to kill off all of the shine. We're almost done, but there's a few more steps here to really push the decals to the next level and make them appear like they're painted on the model as opposed to these decals we put on later. The first of these is to carefully black line the edges where the decals meet the filigree on the edges of the van brace. This is to provide separation, as well as to help cover any mistakes that we put on before when the decals overlaid the van brace and removed the silvering edges. This is a pretty simple step, but takes a little bit of care, 
and recommend using a black paint mixed with a black ink here, as it will flow off your brush more nicely than pure black paint. The next thing I do is make a very thin glaze of flat black paint mixed with water and apply this to the lower half of the van brace to add a little more shading to the decals. This takes two or three layers here and adds a very slight coloration to the lower part of the van brace and the white there, so you don't get this flat white look you get from the decals and it looks more like you painted on these checkers than just decaled them on. For the last step, I apply a little black sponge chipping over the entire van brace and this step really helps to sell the idea that this is not just a simple decal we slapped on, but a painted on detail of the Marine's armor that has been worn and chipped away much like the rest of the model's armor. And it really incorporates the decal into the overall model. So that's really it. And by following these few simple steps, you too can get checker patterns on your models that look like they're painted on with a whole lot less work than freehanding. As always, thanks for watching and let me know in the comments below if you would like any more of these kind of quick tip videos or any other topics you'd like me to cover.